Guys, I love my job. If I won the lottery, I would first get rid of all social media, I would throw away everything, but I would continue coaching. It's the best thing I've ever done in my life. I've never had uh, a more rewarding experience. Um, I thank you, Kyle, for giving me the opportunity. I'm getting choked up because I love it. If I'm squatting and Jeremy Frey and I are squatting and we've got 495 on the bar and something gets out of whack, both Jeremy and I have enough experience and strength to either bail or get out of it. Does that make sense? A 15-year-old kid, does he have any experience doing that? That's how they get hurt. They get, their kids aren't very smart. You guys have to understand that a group or a person is often smart, but as a group, everyone's dumb, right? The mob mentality. So, uh, <clears throat> so no record boards. And it kills the kids, in the, especially in the beginning. They all, I can do much more. I'm like, I don't care. Oh, I, can, I think I can do more. No, I don't care. We had kids that have been with us since I got there in, in about mid-2016 that we go up five pounds on all of our training maxes every three weeks. We have majority of the kids in the squat and deadlift have never reset. If you add up all that time, it's pretty insane, okay? Um, as an example, Brickers just bumps up five pounds every time. The kid who went from 185, he just benched 275 for eight, all right? I don't think he's touched anything over 250. Uh, in the, in the weight room. So I so say this is a little misnomer. It says eight months, not eight weeks. It's actually four years, not eight weeks. When we get the kids coming in, I tell them we got four years to get you better. I don't rush anything. The way that we train, there's a, that was the hardest thing to get these kids to do, to understand the pace of our workouts. And we're still not even close to where I want them to be. But again, I have to compromise. I'm not going to shove this shit down the kids' throats over and over again. <clears throat> but even when we start, we only start with, uh, instead of two assistant lifts, we do one. Because the kids sometimes can't, like, which one do I do? Which, I don't understand. So fuck it, we're just going to do two things. We pound the shit out of them and let them leave, okay? But we look at the long-term approach. The slower uh, gains that you make and the slower approach, the faster your gains will be. Last year, during the 2016 season, January rolls around. Uh, just the... And so the kids have been with us uh, for November, what, about two, two and a half months. Kyle looks at me and says, we have made more progress in two months than we did in two years. The kids were, they, all the teachers were coming up to myself and Kyle like, holy shit, what's, what are you guys doing with these kids? If you looked at how much weight they're really doing on their main lifts, right, it wasn't terribly impressive. But the kids got faster, stronger, it was, it was a huge change. But... If I would have forced fed, it's like uh, you guys ever, uh, I'm sure people went to college and high school crammed for a test. Does, does any of that lasting knowledge, right? You have barely until 9 a.m. to remember that and then you're out. So I tell the kids it's better if we study for 15 minutes every day, as an example, to get them uh, better. If we study 15 minutes every day, by the time the final rolls around, do you think you have to study much? No, right? Does that make sense? Come on, people. I know it's early. All right. We run early and we run often. Uh, because the kids don't have a huge running background, we run as much as we can. We do not run a lot. We probably run on average about 1,600 meters total, not a mile, but maybe total in a day. <clears throat> because of this, by the time, maybe the last three months before the season, we, we slowly increase the running volume, slowly. It gets to the point where the kids will run for 45 minutes straight and they'll be completely fine. Uh, if you try to jam in the running too late in the year, then their lifting goes right in the shitter and kids love the lift, right? Much more than running, right? Anyone? Yes? Okay. So then we take that away, we take their confidence away. So I said, screw it, Let's, we're gonna start running. And it was this, you know, we maybe run 10 hundred sometimes just to get them out running. Anything we can do. But, uh, <clears throat> I don't believe in the old thing, let, let the two-a-days get you in shape. We want to be ready. I want these athletes to be ready for whatever Kyle throws at them and always recover. That's the goal, okay? Our, all of our assistance is done. I tell the kids, boy, hypertrophy, that's really bad. I call everything that we do for our upper body, from the bench press, to the dumbbell work, to uh, the rowing, to the pull-ups, to the dips, stuff like that. We only build armor. I don't care how much the kids bench press. I don't care. I really don't care how much they bench press. I call it getting our prom muscles on. 
okay? We don't care how much they, uh, I just want them bigger because that's one of the best ways to increase your bench press. It's probably the, really the best way for a young kid if, is to just get some muscle mass on them. And most of these kids are lacking so much muscle mass in their upper body. So I said, screw it, let's not worry about how much you bench. In fact, we had a kid, uh, a senior last year who went to a camp and they asked him, how much do you, you know, what's your bench? He's like, I don't know, we never test. And he's like, how can you never test? You never max out? And he's like, hey, coach won't let us. Guess who had the highest bench in that group? That yeah, was him. He'd, I don't think he benched over 245, and I think he did 315 for five or something. It's the most, I don't, know, I don't understand how it works, but it works. Okay, we limit the shit out of the movements. We only do, including the main lifts and assistance, seven things. That's it. Seven movements. I got this from, I'll just pretend I sound cool, from Abijayev, right? Because he did very little movements. There's a couple reasons why we do this. How much time do I got? What do I got there? Ten minutes, maybe five minutes? Okay. Okay, we limit the shit out of our movements. There's a couple reasons why. I got this from Abijayev, and I actually got it from an article I read on a rugby coach. Okay. One, the kids suck at all the movements. If I change things up, the kid's never good at, good at anything. That's just the bottom line, guys. Uh, okay. Number two, our kids, other than the first time they get indoctrinated in the program, they never get sore. After about two weeks, the kids are never sore. This makes things much easier to run. When we run, the kids aren't hobbling around. Our recovery between workout sessions is absolutely insane. So we can, once we start building the volume, building the volume, it's not a, uh, <clears throat> it's not a big deal. Three, probably the most important thing, is our in-season training can be hard and heavy. The kids never get sore again. So now we can train right through the, uh, right the in-season. Our in-season training, we never, we never backed up. We went straight through. The big change that we did, we cut out all uh, barbell squats. I, I got that, I think, maybe from Buddy. And I, I can't tell you how many hours of my life I wasted wrestling with this, because I'm always a big squatter. I always squatted during the season. And it was, like, it was like Sophie's Choice. You guys understand Sophie's Choice? If you're not, you should go see the movie. I, I just, it killed me. And I'm like, and eventually I'm like, well, is it really going to matter? So our main lifts during the season were the uh, trap bar deadlift and the bench press. Interestingly enough, I made a reference to this. The trap bar deadlift, for whatever reason, we can train that lighter than any other lift and make the greatest strength gains. Another reason why we use it in the end season, we don't need to <clears throat> train very heavy, and the kids, for whatever reason, the strength carryover carry is massive. Uh, I mentioned JJ, the young man who jumped over the 32-inch box. If you guys, he didn't straddle it either. I'm telling you, it was one of the most amazing things I've seen. JJ, his highest trap bar deadlift was, in training, was 385. He pulled 550 for five during a test week, okay? So we don't need to train that heavy to get stronger. I can't say that enough. Um, what's, is there any other reasons why, anyone? No? Okay. But that's one of the big things. Uh, now, with some of the kids who have been in the program for a couple more years, I'll, <clears throat> I'll give them a few options. We usually do a lot of dumbbell incline bench. The reason why is because we do a dumbbell rows in between. Does that make sense? The reason why is they don't have to change the bench. If you don't think that matters, if, you live, if you're in high school, right, you limit... They're not very smart, so we got to give everything. But now, some of the t sometimes, I let the kids dumbbell bench instead of dumbbell incline bench. Those are the kind of changes I'm talking about, okay? Just so you guys want to know what we do, we bench squat, trap bar deadlift. We dumbbell squat, dumbbell straight leg deadlift. We uh, dumbbell incline bench and dumbbell incline row, like a chest-supported row. We also allow some kids to do dips and chins. That can do them. But for the, those are our seven movements, okay? That's it. Doo -doo 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 -doo. All right, use indicators. Okay, Dave Tate taught me this. I don't know if Dave's here. Uh, he owns the business, so he shouldn't be here. Uh, our indicators, this allows me to figure out if the kids are uh, ready to train. The number one indicator, I got this from Buddy Morris, was that the kids, when I walk up to the weight room, are full of piss and vinegar, or you, know, you gotta shut them up to quiet them down and get them back, the kids are ready. If they got that attitude um, and they're just slap dicking around, it's awesome. I remember one day during, this, uh, during two a days, I walked up to the weight room and I was like, shit, I got the time wrong because it was quiet. And I go up there and there's 75 or 50 kids up there. I'm like, holy shit, like these kids are dead. Okay. 
So if the kids are grab ass and around, the kids are ready to train. The other indicator, I mentioned this before, if they jump well, land well, bound well, and do gym gymnastics well, the kids are ready. Uh, the other thing is I use bar speed. Uh, every week, every three weeks, we change our training. We increase our training maxes. On that heaviest set, I tell this, I say this all the time, on that heaviest set, if you cannot get five good, awesome, strong reps, it's too heavy, come see me. I tell them all the time, the main lifts are my responsibility. It is your responsibility to tell me that there's a problem, okay? But that is me, that is on me. I will, I will not, I will, if you give me the opportunity, put it on me. It's my uh, responsibility to take care of the numbers. The assistance work, that's what I call individual sovereignty. You are responsible for yourself. You push as, as hard as you can, as, as hard as you want. We had a young kid, uh, Richie Guybe, on Wednesday. Uh, we put a little challenge to Richie and the rest of the kids to do 100 reps with the uh, dumbbell squat with 100 pounds or over. Richie does 255 reps, uh, 250 reps with uh, mostly with 115 and 130, okay? But I put that on the kids. If you guys want to get bigger, if you guys want to get stronger, I will help you out with this the main lifts. The other stuff, you got to start pushing, you, you know, and so the kids starting to respond to that a little bit more and more, and they start doing some pretty insane stuff. I can't see that, honey. What was, our, what was that? Five. Five. Okay. All right. Does that make sense? So as a coach, you have to be ready <clears throat> to make changes. I always tell people, uh, if you have to know your program that you're doing, it has to be you, okay? It can't be someone else's program. I can't take Alabama strength program and apply it to my guys and think it's going to work. It's not like that. In fact, I can go on and on about this. You have to, as I, I call it, knowing the trap doors of your training program. When the kids are shitty, what do I do? How do I retain the integrity of the workout and what we're going to do <clears throat> and still cut back on stuff? Okay, you have to be ready to, to know that. And you have to know your program. Kyle's done this program for about a year now. It's only a year, I've been doing this since 2009, and I just figured out more trap doors. I didn't know them all the time. You have what, the tier program? You know, hey, if I do this, if I do this, I wouldn't know what to do if something fucked up, but Joe Ken knows what to do, right? Do you still do the tier program? Right, yeah, okay. You can say something, Joe, it's okay. All right. <laughs> but you have to know your program. Know, hey, <clears throat> if this kid's got, uh, you know, bum shoulder, how do I, how do I retain the uh, workout? How do I do all that stuff? So know your program. So <clears throat> it's okay, I'll give you an example, is uh, people, a lot of coaches contact me, they ask me what I do, and I said, listen, it's not, I mean, it's not a secret what we do. It's, we use this with this and this and this. You know, I explain to them. And, uh, but how come London High School the kids got super, super strong, everything changed, you know, but if, big old man, you look like a, <laughs> do you ride a Harley or anything? No. If this guy takes that same program, the chances of it working for your athletes is okay, but the most important thing is not the sets and reps and the exercise schedule, because for years I thought that was, and it was at the time for me, but the most important X factor is the guy running the program. It's you. You have to know everything about the program. You have to understand what to look for. And I can't say that enough. I'll, my example always is Scott Frost. You guys know who Scott Frost is? Scott Frost goes to UCF. They roll a donut two, three years ago, right? And then they won six games. They, won, they went 14 and 0 and beat Auburn, okay? <clears throat> so Scott, uh, Scott Frost leaves Oregon. Oregon goes to shit, right? They run the same offense though, right? The, he comes to UCF, they run the same offense as Oregon. How much game tape is there on Oregon's offense right now? There's millions of hours, right? Okay. And we can all argue that UCF doesn't always get the best athletes. So how come they went 14 to 0? Because everyone runs the same fucking plays. I don't care if you run the spread or the wishbone. Everyone, for the most part, there's only so many plays you can run in football, so many route variations. So what's the difference? And the only thing I'm like, God, that's how important the general is. That's how important El Jefe is. And as a strength coach, you are your own El Jefe for your kids. So be the best coach you can be. And I'm almost done here. I'm going to just show you a sample of the workout that we do. The other thing, guys, I can't. Don't coach what you don't know. OK? Uh, for years and years, if you were part of, have been part of this for a while, I think 
the uh, NSCA used to always push Olympic lifting, okay? I don't, I can't coach the Olympic lifts. Joe Ken can coach the Olympic lifts fine, I cannot coach the, uh, and plus our kids aren't very strong to do them. The whole point though is, I'm not comfortable teaching them, fucking leave it out. If you're not comfortable teaching the back squat, but you're, you know how to coach the front squat, then just front squat them. Coach what you know. That doesn't mean you never learn, but before you throw something into the program, you gotta know how to do it. You gotta know its, its effect, how to coach it, and stuff like that. If you're just a body weight guy, guess what you should do with your kids? Just body weight stuff, because that's what your specialty is. You understand it, you know how to, how to program it, okay? So that's the number one thing I tell everyone. Like, you know, how do you coach the bench? Like, do you bench? No, then fuck it, don't do it. Just do push-ups or something, okay? Um, well, we won't do this. This is JJ's actual workout, okay? So we always warm up, obviously mobility stuff and movement. He did about, we warmed up with 10 contacts at box jumps. We did 10 bounds, okay? This one got cut off here. So this is the exact, he does uh, 10 sets of squats, five sets of dumbbell incline, five sets of dumb, uh, dumbbell incline row. The goal is this, to get this done in 45 minutes, and they usually do, okay? The most amazing thing that happened is our kids' conditioning went through the roof uh, with just doing this. We are always moving. The kids aren't strong enough. They don't have great inner, inter and intramuscular coordination that they need to take a big break between lifts, even with big barbell lifts. Um, so we had an awesome, almost aerobic benefit to our, to our training. And Kyle, he saw it more than anyone. He couldn't believe it. He said, Jesus, these kids don't run that much. Why are they in such good shape? This is, a, this is part of it, okay? And if you notice, we do two warm-up sets, three sets of what I would, you know, the typical five through one style program. And then we drop down to what we call first set last. You see 260, that's our first kind of work set. And we do five sets of five there. We've tried pushing it to sets of 10 on the squat and tried to push in the uh, assistance lifts a little bit more, but it just, it stung me in the ass. We can, oh, stop talking. Okay, oh, Jesus. All right, and that's our running. But the whole point is, guys, uh, we found a sweet spot with this. We don't have to deload that much. Before, when I, was, I, I really pushed the volume, so, uh, but this ended up being the number one thing. This is always, this is in the forever book. It's, again, it's not secret stuff. Uh, I can't thank you enough for coming out here. Guys, I love my job. If I won the lottery, I would first get rid of all social media. I would throw away everything, but I would continue coaching. It's the best thing I've ever done in my life. I've never had uh, a more rewarding experience. Um, I thank you, Kyle, for giving me the opportunity. I'm getting choked up because I love it. But uh, just, uh, guys, the, the changes you can make to a team physically is insane. The changes that I've made to some, I've made, like listen to me, I've made. <laughs> The changes I've seen in some of these kids, we got kids who will never play a down and they don't care they all have to play a down. <clears throat> the, the personality change and the confidence that these kids have now is absolutely insane. And with all this shit that's going on with kids being bullied and not feeling part of stuff, these, if you can get these kids as part of a group, we, again, we train year round and they're always with us. And they've got kids that, man, they're, you would call them nerds or dorks or whatever, they come in, they kick ass, they give effort, all of a sudden, they're part of the crew, okay? And uh, again, as in high school, that is a huge thing, okay? Uh, I'm gonna be avail available for questions, I guess, somewhere. So uh, I thank you guys for coming here. Uh, and uh, I don't know, I hope you learned something. I don't know what the hell's going on. Thank you. <laughs>